So I'm about to help you better understand your body's circadian rhythm. And just know that this is about a lot more than just, am I sleeping? Am I getting in a good deep state of sleep? Because problems with this rhythm can create a lot more problems than just sleep. And somebody could be sleeping fine, and if they still have problems in this area, it can be creating some significant health issues. This is a big piece of the puzzle. Let's get at it. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So the first thing to understand is that insomnia can be caused by a wide variety of issues. It's not just a problem with the circadian rhythm that can create insomnia or someone who's having a hard time sleeping or maybe they wake up too early. There's a wide variety of issues. So if you're having trouble sleeping, be sure to watch our video on understanding insomnia so you can understand all the possible causes. We'll talk about how this can contribute to sleep problems here in a second, but just know that this is not just about sleep and there's other issues that can create problems for sleep too. So, it was Dr. Emanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that the body at the cellular level has a natural circadian rhythm. So, during the day, the body should be in what's called a catabolic state. And this is where it's really good at creating energy and it's really good at uh, keeping us going all day. So, we should be in this state during the day. And during this state, the body will be really good at breaking down old tissue so that it can be rebuilt as well. And then at night, the body should move into this anabolic state. So this happens at nighttime. And this is where the body is really good at resting and repairing and sleeping and rebuilding all those things that it broke down during the day. So you can see that both of these states are appropriate. There's nothing wrong with either of them. The body really needs both of them to happen for the body to function the way that it wants to function. So the problem is it could take a lot of resources to make this switch. And if somebody has a low vitality and they don't have all the resources that the body really needs to function correctly, or maybe the body's dealing with too many burdens, then sometimes they won't be able to make that switch every day. And they're not really moving that cycle like it should on a daily basis. Another problem is that there's a wide variety of issues in our world today that can push a person to be stuck in one of these states most of the time or they'll get stuck too far into that state. And when a person is in that state too far, it can create a lot of trouble because basically the body is switching back and forth like this so it can optimize the way that it can complete functions for that part of that 24 hour cycle. So in this catabolic state, the body is moving to that state so it's really good at doing all the things that you would do during the day and then it wants to move into this state so it's really good at doing those things that happen at night. But if a person is stuck like this all the time, it's gonna create a wide variety of issues. So if someone's stuck in an overly catabolic state, we will see a lot of insomnia. A lot of our insomniacs are stuck in this state and they can't sleep because at the cellular level, the body's awake. It's like, hey, it's daytime. Let's rock and roll. Let's get this train going. So they have a hard time sleeping because at the cellular level, they are go, go, going. We'll also see issues like a lot of insulin resistance. Most of our type 2 diabetics will show up and see that they're really leaning too far on that catabolic side. And a lot of people in this anabolic side will see things like constipation and anxiety. And we'll talk a little bit about why these things happen. But when you can start to look at your body chemistry and figure out, okay, do I have a problem here? Then you can see, does this problem, does this catabolic imbalance that I appear to be dealing with match up with the symptoms that I'm dealing with? And if it does, then I can just work on correcting this and a lot of people will correct those symptoms. So let's look at this a little deeper. Over here, we see some of the markers that will show up if a person is leaning too far in one direction. And none of these things are, are diagnostic. Um, you know, you don't have a CAT scan uh, machine in your, in your basement. You just want to be able to look at your body chemistry with simple tests that you can run at home to get a picture of how your body appears to be operating. And if we can get an idea of how our body's operating, then we can make adjustments to correct things. So in this catabolic state, we'll often see a urine pH that's below 6.1. 
So you can pick up pH testing strips at most health food stores or, or on Amazon, and you can look at your urine pH at least two hours after a meal, and if it's lower than 6.1, that's a possible marker for a catabolic imbalance. And if that urine pH is higher than 6.3, that's a marker for an anabolic imbalance. Now, that doesn't mean that you have an anabolic imbalance just because your urine pH is high. We're just looking at markers, and if you start lining up a whole bunch of them, then that's an indication that you may be leaning too far on that side. With a catabolic state, we see a saliva pH that's a little higher, and we see a pulse that's a little bit lower. A lot of people feel like, oh, I'm, I'm an athlete, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a long distance athlete, and that's why I have a low pulse. Pulse goes low when you're in really good shape. But a lot of these people are just working out too hard that they're pushing their body into that catabolic breakdown state all the time, and it will bring their pulse down. We see a lot of soft stools in the catabolic state because in a catabolic state, the body will send more of its water to the bowels and less to the kidneys. And so if more of the water is going to the bowels, it can loosen up that stool and create a lot of chronic diarrhea issues. Now there's other causes of chronic diarrhea, and all of these issues that I talk about, most of them have more than one possible underlying cause. So we have videos that cover all these things that we're talking about, and we'll put links in the description below, so if you're dealing with chronic diarrhea, you can see those to see maybe there's other issues that are creating the problem beyond just a catabolic imbalance. In this imbalance, we'll also see a lot of high urine debris, like if you pee in a cup and you kind of hold it up to the, the light so you can see it, you see a lot of stuff floating around there, just because the body is in that breakdown mode most of the time. In an anabolic imbalance, we won't see very much debris because the body doesn't have the ability to break down like it's supposed to so that it can be rebuilt. So in this catabolic state, a person will wake up real easy, usually before the alarm clock because at the cellular level, they're kind of awake all the time. They might have insomnia issues. And we'll see oliguria, which is someone who pees, but just in small amounts. And over here, we see polyuria, which is someone who's peeing a lot. And maybe they have to get up three or four times in the middle of the night just to pee. And the reason that is is because their body is too far in that anabolic state. And the body's sending too much water to the kidneys, so they got to pee it out all the time. All the water is going to one place so they kind of have to get up and pee all the time. That's why they also will see a harder stool because not enough water is going to the bowels and it's all going to the kidneys. They might have a hard time waking up in the morning. You know, if somebody's literally not a morning person and I'll, I'll wake up after about 17 cups of coffee, sometimes they're just stuck in that anabolic state where at the cellular level, the body is really still sleeping and wanting to do its repair processes. So. In this state, we also see things like hard tumor problems. We see things like uh, anxiety. Uh, that can be a big one. And there's another cause of anxiety. But in this anabolic state, the body likes to create its energy through fermentation. And then when you do that, the byproduct is lactic acid. And the lactic acid can go really high and create anxiety that way. Um, so, you know, it, it can really depend on what you're looking at, but there's a lot of issues that can show up with one specific imbalance. So if you can work to balance out the body a little bit, you can improve a lot of those issues. A lot of people who are dealing with tachycardia are dealing with an anabolic imbalance because it can push that pulse way too high. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned we see our type 2 diabetics over here on the catabolic side because this low urine pH seems to make insulin a little bit less effective. And then the body needs to make a lot more insulin to get the same job done. And eventually the body doesn't want to listen to that insulin. So then the body's like, oh, I'll just make even more insulin. And then they become insulin resistant and turn into a type two diabetic. Someone who gets a lot of injuries and has a hard time healing, they might be stuck in this state. So what you want to do is just want to look at these things and just start marking off. Okay, yeah, this is a problem for me. My urine pH is 5.5, so that's below 6.1. My saliva pH is high. Uh, I tend to have some loose stools, um, but it's also hard for me to wake up in the morning. And so, you know, you're just kind of looking at it, and most people are not going to have everything on one side. If they are, then that's kind of a slam dunk, and it's probably pretty certain that they're dealing with an imbalance. But most people are going to have issues on both sides, and you should. That's a good sign that the body is balanced and that you're moving back and forth like you should, but if you start rocking all these things and it's like, oh wow, I'm really got a lot more on this side than I do on this side, then you might want to take some steps to try to correct that imbalance and see if some of your issues improve. And, and to help you understand this a little bit better, 
My book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, walks you through simple self-tests that you can do at home, picking up tools that you can pick up at a, a pharmacy or, or a health food store and just use those simple tools, and it'll kind of walk you through that process. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free, and it'll kind of walk you through that, and it'll even show you how to fill out one of these imbalance guides so that you can kind of run all these tests and get an idea if the body's functioning right in this area as well as other areas. And again, none of these things are diagnostic. You're just trying to get a picture of how your unique bioindividuality is operating and how your body's functioning. Because we all process foods, supplements, lifestyle choices, we all process those things differently. And if we can understand how our unique body is operating, then it helps us cheat a little bit and make improvements a little bit easier. You just don't want to look at any of these things and go, oh, I have a hard stool, so I must be having an anabolic imbalance. There are other causes for constipation, so you need to kind of understand the other variables that could be in play there. Uh, this is just very common to see with an anabolic imbalance. Because even if you're not sleeping well at all, understand that there are issues in an anabolic imbalance that can restrict a person's ability to sleep as well. It's not just this imbalance. This imbalance can affect how the body is processing glucose and maybe uh, lowering all the resources too quickly and waking somebody up. So you can have insomnia in either situation. Don't be confused just because we see this most commonly in here. The problems can create the same problem for different reasons. So it's really about looking at the numbers. The body chemistry is, is weighed a little bit more than the symptoms that commonly show up with an imbalance. You don't want to just look at symptoms and, and think, oh, I must have that. You want to look at the numbers and your symptoms and then get an idea, okay, am I leaning too far on that side or not? So if you need help with that, I'll put the link so you can get the book for free in the description below. And if you hate to read, we also have a totally free digestion course that walks you through those same steps of checking your self-test numbers and looking at your chemistry and all that kind of stuff. So for now, if you heard some things that think you might say, oh man, I, I must be dealing with catabolic or maybe an anabolic imbalance, jump over now and watch our video on understanding an anabolic imbalance or understanding a catabolic imbalance. I can't wait to hear about your results.